hello everyone um welcome to another video and in this video we will be looking at how to connect to our chinook database but before we go to connecting our chinook database file right let's just take a little look at a theoretical aspect of creating a database right and we said um what we have here is that creating a database involves several steps right including designing the database schema right designing the structure of your database right what um how you want your tables to connect to each other what are the primary keys and the foreign keys relationship so you're just trying to design the structure of your database right that's the idea that's the first general step right then selecting a database management system of your choice right whether you want to use uh, mysql remember we said it we spoke about it in our first video introduction to sql where we have different management system database management system postgres mysql sql server sqlite and the rest right so creating a database emanates from designing this database schema right selecting a database management system and also implementing the database but hey here we have general overview of the process right that's basically it right we have this is like a general overview of the process but remember we said creating a database involves several steps so let's take a look at the several steps so first of all it's imperative that you need to define the purpose and scope of your database right so determining what kind of data will you store what are your goals what are your objectives of creating this database is very 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 key right and then identifying the scope of the database will it be used for personal small scale project or will it serve as an enterprise level application right will it be used for for enterprise level where we would have series and large amount of data right so that would definitely factor or it will be a factor to choose the kind of database management system that you will need, right? So you see that also selecting a database management system has a lot of um, factors that that, um, um, that affect us, right, in choosing different kinds of DBMS. So it's very important. And then another step is to plan the database schema, just like I said initially, right? Creating um, table structures, creating, trying to see how they can be related trying to see trying to identify the columns trying to identify the tables try to uh, as i said create the relationship in terms of primary key and foreign keys do you understand so that that that's basically um designing the schema of the database is very important so as i said identifying the entities right determine the main entities so entities in this sense means tables right determine the main tables that will be represented in your database so before you start creating database before you start creating your database right you need to understand the kind of tables the kind of entities that you would house in your database right so for example if you are creating a database for a school you need to understand that there are some entities there are some tables that you would have that would have the details or that will store information on the student so you can call that entity or the table student table right you can also have tables that will store details as you guys teachers you can call that table or entities a teacher table you can also have a cost table right so these are these are what you need to check and plan right that's the idea and then you need to now check for relationships now how do you identify the relationship between these entities so definitely you need to have something with the help of your primary key and then your foreign key right your foreign key your primary key column and then your foreign key column so in an example where you have a student right a student would definitely offer a lot of courses i remember when i when i was in university i did in my year one i did a lot of courses right so imagine in my course table or in my course entity we would have um we would have student ids right that are repetitive right that are repeated because some students will definitely offer um the same course twice right depending on maybe carryover right so that's the idea so we, we can connect those two tables because of primary key and then foreign key so in that sense in my student table in my student entity table my primary key 
column will be the student ID, right? Because each ID identifies a student, uniquely identifies a student. So my ID, my reg number, my registration number, nobody else will have my registration number. That's my unique ID. But in the course table, because I will be able to offer different courses, right? My ID would appear a lot of times. So imagine that I, I write the same course twice. My ID would, would appear twice, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm offering a course twice because of maybe carryover and but it will, it will be on different dates. Do you understand? So that's the idea. So that's how you can relate and, and, and connect and define relationships between entities. So as I said, entities in this sense means tables, right? And then establish attributes. So attributes in this context means columns. Right, properties of that ent entity that describes the table. So determine the attributes, properties that describe each entity. For example, a student table, a student entity would definitely have the name of the student, just like I gave an example initially, right? I would have my reg number, which is going to be like my student ID and then my name, Augustine, right? And then my age, my whatever, where I'm from, my country, my state and the rest, right? So everything in that student entity would describe that entity called student right so that's the idea so you need to know all this before you start saying you want to create a database um so let's move on to what we have for today so how do we connect to our chinook database right but in this context in our in our class in we would just be dealing with the chinook database file right so we would have our database file where we we'll just import it to our dbms and in this case we are using sqlite right so now i want to show us how we'll be able to connect to this chinook database file so we have this already in our classroom so it's just for us to click on this once you click on this it takes you to this platform then come to this window you open to another open to a new window and then it gives you options to download so you download it so since you are downloading it you are downloading it as a zip file so it has given me option telling me that yes i've downloaded it um, again because i have it already so that's why it's giving me another one all right so i'll go to my file explorer so how do you look for your file explorer go to your start button and then type file explorer all right so this is what we call file explorer click on it once you click on it, it gives you options, your download folder, your document folder. So it was downloaded, right? So it will definitely be in my download folder. Look at it, right? Voila, you have it ready. So I would right click or rather click on it and then right click. So I want to extract the files, right? I want to extract the files in it. So I'll click on my extract files. So once I click on my extract files, it's asking me, okay, Austin, where do you want to extract those files, the files in this zip folder, right? Where do you want to extract them into? And I'm interested in just the Chinook database file in this zip folder, right? I'll go to, let's say I want to extract it to my videos folder, right? So this is where I want it here. So I want to extract it to my videos folder. I'll come to my video, right? Just click on it, make it highlighted, and then I'll go to OK. So voila, let's check our videos folder. So I'll go to my file explorer one more time. Right. I'll go to my file explorer again. Then I'll go to videos to confirm. So I have it ready. Right. I just extracted it again. Right. So um, so what we will do is to now navigate to our SQ light dbms which i'm sure in the previous video we've seen how to what is sqlite and we've read about what sql sqlite means and we've been able to download the sqlite db browser to our personal computer so i'm going to navigate to our sqlite personal or rather our sqlite db browser for we to now connect this database file that we've been able to extract and store in my video folder so i'll go close this then i'll close this right so this is it right db browser that we've already downloaded in our previous video then i'll double click on it once i double click on it it gives us this wonderful pane right where we can do a whole lot of things right but what we are interested in today is for us to connect this database file 
and then have all the tables that we would use SQL and we wish to query from. So I'll go to, so let's say I want to create a new database, I'll click on this, right? But I'm interested in opening an existing database file that we already have, right? So I'll come here, right? And then where did I download or where did I extract my file to? I extracted it to my videos folder, right? I'll come here and I'll click on it. So this is the file. This is the file, guys. So you click on it and then you click on open. See, voila, you have your database file in your SQLite DBMS, right? So this is basically what you need to do. And if you have gotten to this step or you have gotten to this stage, then congratulations, you are on the right track, right? So if you want to start executing your queries, you come to execute and you start writing your queries. If you want to look at your data and see different tables you can come to browse data and then you look at everything but if you are here then congratulations you are on the right track so i'm going to stop here and then we would meet and we would meet and we will meet in the next video so thank you very much guys and see you on the next one